Hey, my name is Kendall Williams. Uh, I'm a graduate student at MIT. I'm currently in my fourth year. I'm originally from Nashville, Tennessee. I'm now working at MIT on studying electrocatalysis, uh, which is basically a fancy way of saying using electricity to turn some chemicals into more useful chemicals. My name's Kim. I'm from Midland, Michigan. Uh, so I'm not in, and that's where I'm quarantining right now. Uh, so I'm not in Cambridge. And at home with my parents, which has been really nice. And I'm a fifth year in graduate school and I'm about to graduate. Yay! Um, and my research has been uh, looking at the conversion of natural gas to more useful products. Hi everyone, I'm Alexi Keshfi and I'm from Cupertino, California. I'm currently going into my third year as a graduate student at MIT for chemical engineering and my research focuses on the effects of electric fields on chemical reactions. My name is Abby Tausick and I am from San Francisco, California. I am a first year graduate student and I'm currently studying perovskites, which are these really small little crystals that can be used to make really efficient solar cells and LEDs for clean energy. When I was in elementary school going into middle school, I was pretty convinced that I wasn't good at math. Um, and I had some teachers who fortunately really believed in me and um, not only taught me, but showed me that I was good at math. Uh, and through their support and the support of teachers that I had in middle school and high school, I was able, able to see that I could help solve some of society's problems with pollution, with global warming, with health. Um, and I think by studying chemical engineering as a result of gaining that confidence, um, I've been equipped to, to do some of that, to actually solve those societal problems. I wanted to be a chemical engineer because um, I had really great teachers through middle school and high school. When I was first learning about chemistry and physics, I was really interested in them. They made those topics interesting and fun and exciting, and so that's why I wanted to be a chemical engineer. Um, I also got to see a lot of demos and experiments in high school uh, and middle school, so that's where my interest came from. You know, for me, it was my eighth grade science teacher and my uh, high school chemistry teacher. Um, they both were really good at showing us the fun side of science with really cool demonstrations and everything. Then they also showed us that science was really challenging, uh, but those challenges were super rewarding if uh, once you get to the end of it and figure it all out. In middle school and high school, I was involved with my school's robotics club. We built a new robot every year that competed in some challenge, like playing basketball or climbing up a pyramid. And then at the end of every competition cycle, there would be a big event where everyone's robots from all around the world would come together and compete against each other. So our society is really good at taking fuels and burning them and turning them into CO2. And one interesting problem that I've been able to work on is taking that CO2 and turning it back into something useful like fuels. Uh, so I've been able to study this with my advisor at MIT using electricity to turn carbon dioxide back into useful fuels. So I think the problem I'm working on right now is really interesting. I work on the conversion of natural gas to useful products. Natural gas is often used to heat homes and buildings, um, but there's still an abundance of natural gas in the U.S. that is often actually just converted to carbon dioxide and its heat isn't reused. And so with the carbon dioxide, that definitely contributes to climate change and it's not good for it. So by working on studying the conversion of natural gas to more useful products, I feel like I can benefit the world in a positive way. So a lot of the electricity that we use today comes from burning natural gas, uh, which is a fossil fuel and that generates carbon dioxide when you burn it and that means that it causes global warming. Um, what we did in my undergraduate was we think we found a way to convert that into hydrogen gas. 
Uh, and so hydrogen, when you burn it, uh, still produces power, but it doesn't make any carbon dioxide, uh, which means that it doesn't contribute to global warming. And so this is really exciting when we figured this out because it means that there's a way that we can use abundant fossil fuel resources without actually causing global warming. And that's really, really exciting to me. One of the most interesting problems that I worked on was when I was doing my undergraduate education and I was on a team that designed a solar powered race car and we then built the race car and then we brought it to Australia for the World Solar Challenge, which is a race that goes all the way from Darwin to Adelaide, so like from the top to the bottom of Australia, and it takes about a week and it's really, really fun. So one time that I had to be creative in solving an engineering problem is actually uh, recently when I was baking a cheesecake. Uh, baking is kind of like engineering in that you're taking all these things together and trying to, you're making something new from it. Um, and partway through making a cheesecake, I was short on cream cheese, uh, but we did have sour cream in the fridge and I used it because they're both dairy products, um, they both kind of got that similar sourness to it. Uh, and thought maybe it would work. Uh, the only thing that was different was its consistency and turns out the cheesecake turned out great. Um, it was a, definitely a little bit lighter and not quite as dense as if it was with cheese, cream cheese, but end result was great. So one of the big challenges with converting natural gas into clean hydrogen is that you make a lot of solid graphite, um, like the same stuff that's in your pencil lead. Um, and when you're making a lot of that, that gunks up your reactor and is really kind of dangerous for the whole process. If something clogs, you could have an explosion and everything. So one of the, uh, the way we solved this was by actually performing the reaction in a really, really hot molten metal. Um, and when you do the reaction in the molten metal, the graphite that you make actually just gently floats to the surface of the liquid. Um, and when you do that, it's really easy to remove and doesn't really cause any problems. So that was a pretty creative solution to, uh, to a really challenging problem. I think I have to be creative whenever I solve any engineering problem. I've been doing a lot of math recently in my research, and I think with every math problem, I spend a lot of time just sitting back and looking at it and thinking, okay, what am I going to do with all of these equations? How am I going to figure out which ways these need to go together? And to me, that's really creative. If there's one thing that I could go back and say to my seventh grade self, uh, it would be to not underestimate the amount of influence you can have on your school, your community, your teachers. Uh, so one resource that I didn't have growing up was having like a team, like a science bowl or science Olympiad team where I could be really supported in, uh, in learning more about science and having enthusiasm for science. And I think if a student brought that up to a teacher, that teacher would think that was awesome. Uh, so getting involved with those sorts of teams, starting those sorts of things, if you think that might be interesting, I think that would be a really great way to uh, sort of cultivate your sort of popular science knowledge um, and learn more about science and engineering along the way. To learn more about science and engineering, I would say ask a lot of questions and read a lot of books. So you can ask your teachers, your parents, um, the internet, you can read books, you can read whatever you come across on the internet, and you can also just watch shows and videos um, such as Mythbusters, which looks at looking at how things work or why they don't work, or you can look up science demos, uh, whatever you're interested in on YouTube, such as Elephant Toothpaste. Definitely recommend you to look that one up. If I wanted to learn more about science and engineering as a seventh grader. Um, I would start by asking a lot of why questions to your science teacher. So always be probing, you know, why does something happen? Why does something work this way? Um, just there's always another layer deeper that you can go in science. Um, the other thing I would recommend is is checking out um, a lot of resources online. Um, you can definitely ask your your science or your math teachers for different resources online that allow you to go a little bit more in depth to things you want. Um, I know um, one of my lab mates has a cool Instagram page called uh, Color Me PhD that does a lot of uh, uh, kind of educational coloring pages that are based in uh, a lot of chemical engineering uh, concepts. So you should definitely check that out if you're also artistically inclined. If I were a seventh grader 
and I wanted to learn more about science and engineering, I would read lots of books. I think there are really good books out there, and if you just pick one that's interesting to you and then just keep reading, read other ones by that same author, read other ones in the same genre, that's how I learned a lot, and I hope that you can too.